When you stand and watch the young people that mm -hmm. are playing basketball, shooting hoops, doing soccer at Camp Olympia, mm -hmm. what, what goes through your mind, what goes through your heart when you're watching that? Well, I couldn't be happier that we can offer a place in, in the people to go nurture their, their uh, own individual dreams. You know, what's going to make something special for somebody is that they want it. And so we got 45 different activities. I don't care what they want to get better at, but I'm hoping that they want to uh, search for excellence in the things that they do. And so we offer an environment and an encouragement to do so. And so they're away from their home. They're growing on their own. We use a, a demerit and merit system. It's a system of logical consequence. So they're rewarded for their own acts and not using peer pressure as their discipline system. You know, if you got a tribal system where you got points for if you're against your tribe, then you got your peers telling you, don't, you know, don't screw up. This is uh, more, I guess, an individually initiated uh, type of self-control self and self-initiated. If you earn enough merits, you go to the country store, you can buy something. If you get too many Ds, you go get to see the camp director. Those are some good uh, rewards and demerits programs for kids. So it's in any case, that's that's the the system of accountability that we have. And accountability is something that is semi got lost. I think we kind of need to bring that back. Individual accountability is important. And that's what you're encouraging here. Yeah, that's what we try to do. What's the first T program? Well, the first T basically introduces golf to kids that don't have that opportunity. You know, parents that are members of a country club, for the most part, have got some place and got some people to introduce golf to their kids. This is a national program that was really started, I guess, by the PGA and Augusta and, and several other places. And so it's grown to maybe 150 chapters, and I think there's maybe two chapters in Houston and this one up here, Whispering Pines. I'm gonna transition quickly into Whispering Pines what was the what was the impetus behind it? What did it look like? Kind of you were describing what the needler looked like. Okay. Walk me through Whispering Pines and the very beginning. I heard you had a. Well, we problem. we've been here for probably 20 years on this site before we tried to start Whispering Pines, which opened in 2001, and essentially it was all just woods. And uh, we basically had a bunch of beetles that were eating our trees. Okay, pine bark beetles are a menace here in East Texas and. So we decided that we were going to go harvest the trees, and in the process of harvesting the trees, we'd go build a golf course. And what started is a, not a full-grown golf course, but an alf course. So uh, alf was golf without the greens. So we got a wash tub about this big. Instead of shooting at a hole about this big, we got a wash tub this big, and a real motor, you know, cleared the thing for a golf course. You know, we built the Austin Country Club. I was the developer of the Austin Country Club with Pete Dice. So I built a, you know, full-grown course before. So I had some idea what to do. We got Jay A. Bear to be our consultant to go help us with the golf program at Camp Olympia. And Jay came out here and is a wonderful man and, you know, just one of the, the greatest people in golf ever. A dear friend of the Gilbert family. And so he came out and said, this is great. You ought to go make this into a golf course. So we built a few holes and we liked it and then we built a few more and then we finally outreached our irrigation system from camp. So we said, well, you know, if you're gonna build a big golf course out here, why would you build a golf course in the middle of nowhere? Well, the only good reason we could think is to do the Olympics for golf and set this up for charity. So really that was the inspiration for doing this is say, well, what does golf is lacking? The only thing that I could think there's a tournament every weekend somewhere. So the only thing that lacks from my perspective was the Olympics. And Chris and I were both amateur athletes. We never really became pros. And so the idea of amateur athletes is something that uh, I guess we really cottoned to and felt that it would be an additive uh, element to the game of golf. If you use golf for charity, it raises more money than football, baseball, basketball combined. So. You know, it really has been more a philanthropic uh, way to do that than, than any other of the other sports. So I don't mean to degrade any of the sports, but it's just golf gives away a billion dollars a year. 
my last question is, you are such an advocate for amateur golf, for the spirit. What makes this such a special and unique event for all the players that are here and for the teams and the opportunity? Well, first of all, they're coming 1,200,000 miles, which is to the moon and back twice. So they're coming from every continent and we bond them together in Olympic Village. And so it's a great golf course, it's a great golf tournament, but it's more than that. And the reason I can tell it means something to them is you see Paige McKenzie is the U.S. captain right now. You, you know, we had Patricia Newman from uh, Sweden as a captain. You know, we got a captain who's on the LPGA Tour from France. You know, we've had Paula Kramer, Lorraine Ochoa. You know, we've had probably five or six pros take a week off their pro career and come back here and captain their teams. So the point is they play in golf tournaments every weekend this meant something to them. And it, we're not paid anything for doing it. They did it because they want to serve. Why do you think it means something? What do you think is so special to them about it? Well, for the most part, they're young. They're 19 and a half years old is the average age. And, you know, you're in an impressionable time. They don't get camp experiences. Most of them are playing tournaments instead of going to camp. Camp is a special time to grow and to learn and, and to connect with people. And so that's what they do, I think, is I think they grow, learn, and connect with people, and that makes it special. We have a bunch of special people here, and I think they, first of all, know how to do that. That's what camp does. And so over at camp, they get a different experience. On this golf course, it's a great golf course, but they do this every week. But that's what the, the combination of these two, I think, is what makes it unique and wonderful.